an inmate at the Virginia Department of Corrections, Red Onion State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. This is Randall Vaughn. I'm currently serving 1,214 years for capital murder in Red Onion State Prison in the state of Virginia in the USA. This is my podcast, Red Onion Randy. Today I'm going to answer a listener's question, and it is a... It's a very good question, and it's a question that's going to get me in trouble with a lot of male inmates. I don't particularly give a damn. Cherie wrote and asked, how can you tell the difference if an inmate that a woman on the street is in a relationship with is sincere, or is he just using her to get what he wants? Well, Cherie, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. I've been in prison for 31 years, juvenile and adult. And I would have to say eight times out of 10, you're being used. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but in my experience, most guys in prison just use people. That doesn't mean that your boyfriend, your love interest is using you. And to be honest with you, The only surefire way I know of finding out if he's legit or not is if you've been sending him money, stop sending him money. Just tell him, look, some things came up. I can't can't send you money no more because that's what most guys in prison use women for. So they can get money so they can go to the commissary so they can, you know, buy things and have someone just to pass the time with someone to send them some sexy pics stuff of that nature, someone that they can, you know, do phone sex with and stuff. Unfortunately, that's the way it is, and that's the only way I know to find out for sure is to simply cut him off and just talk to him. Don't do, you know, the phone sex no more. Stop sending him sexy pictures. Stop sending him money. Because you'll find out if that's all he cares about or not. Trust me, you're going to find out. He's going to make himself known because when he no longer has that resource that he can rely upon, you're going to see a change in him, either for the better or for the worse. Yeah, that's, I mean, I know it's a messed up situation because everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants that one true person that they can just build something with. I know I do. I would absolutely love to be in love. I, you know, love is the greatest force in existence. You know, and it just unfortunately... I've known so many guys in here. There's a guy in the pod with me now. As a matter of fact, he works with me on night shift. And he's young, dude. He's a, he's a child, really. He's, he, he's, he's, oh, my God, he's such a child. You know, I constantly have to stop myself from being overly aggressive with this dude just because I want to slap some damn sense into him so bad. He'll come out, and he'll barely clean just so he can run over and get the phone. And I were, he was sitting there talking to this one girl. And I happened to be on the kiosk, you know, typing up an email right beside him. And me and him were the only two people out here in the park. You know, everybody else had locked down for the night. I was typing up emails, and I listened to a 20-minute phone conversation between him and, and, and one of the girls that he's writing. And he is writing numerous girls from all over. And... His conversation for 20 minutes literally consisted of him asking her for money. Buy me this. Put money on my phone for this. Put money on my book so I can buy commissary. Put money on the kiosk so I can buy this album. Like, yo, I have to have this album right now. Do it right now. Do it right now. You know, and I mean, I'm just, I just want to just grab him by the head and just start shaking some damn sense into him. Like, man, dude, this is another human being, man. And you have guys that are do that. And it's just, it's so sad that people only think about themselves, but I, and I hate to say it, but most guys in prison only think about themselves. That's why I caution people about starting relationship with guys in prison, because you don't know. You really don't know. It just, it's experience. I'm not telling you to cut guys, to cut him off and quit writing him or anything. By all means, Sheree, don't do that at all. But test him. Test him for a good six months. And is he, is he still the same person in six months that he is today? If he is, if like if he doesn't say anything about the money, if he's like, oh, okay, that's fine, you know, just I, I want to talk to you. I don't care about the money. 
And when he responds like that, deal. Don't send no more money to him. Just give him, give him time to prove himself. Because some guys are hip to the game. Some guys know that a girl will do that for two or three weeks. Now, you have to do it for six months minimum. Six months minimum. I would even go more than that, to be honest with you. But, you know, and it also depends on you. And this is the thing. You can find out. You can call the Department of Corrections, and you can ask to speak to the business manager and just say, hey, look, I'm concerned that this inmate, and you give the name and, you know, their, you know, their prison identification number is using me. And, you know, I don't want to be used. Can you tell me, you know, how much money he has on his books? Can you tell me who all sends him money? They probably won't give you personal information, but they will give you some information. And it also, it depends on who you talk to. Some people won't and some people will. You can also speak to the prison investigators. Ask them, hey, look, I don't want to be caught up in something criminal, illicit, or or, or whatever. And you can find out some information. Because, let's face it, if the guy had several hundred dollars on his books, if a guy has a couple thousand dollars on his books, and he's sitting there telling you, hey, look, man, I, you know, I don't have anything. Like, I'm, you know, I, I need to go to the store. Like, you know, I'm going hungry in here. Then you know he's using you. But if they confirm what he's saying, then you know the guy's being legit. So there's ways to find out without knowing the inmate personally. I can't give you a yay or nay. I can only tell you to go with your gut. You know, if your gut is telling you that you're being used, then I would just sever all ties because it's not worth it. Because this is the thing. If you were ever in a relationship with anyone and you do not trust the person, that right there tells you immediately you have to break off your relationship with that individual because if you cannot trust them, If you do not trust them, you don't need to be in a relationship because your instincts, your gut, your heart is telling you what your mind is failing to see or refuses to see. We all want to be in love. We all want to be in love. And we need to be in love. We need to have someone who we truly believe wants to be with us for who we are, regardless of what circumstances they find themselves in or we find ourselves in. I've had a lot of women from around the world write me since the documentary came out and since my podcast came out wanting to be in relationships with me. And unfortunately, I ha- you know, it breaks my heart to do this. But I have to tell them, look, as long as I'm in prison, I'm not interested in a romantic relationship. I'm not going to use you for my emotional needs. I'm not going to use you for financial needs. I don't care if I need it or I don't. I'm not going to use someone. I mean, there's one woman. She is so desperate for me. And yet she's been broken. She's been abused and used and mistreated. And the fact that I am who I am. I am legit. I am sincere. She sees that and she recognizes that and she's so desperate to be with me that she would literally let me do anything to her. I could get away with anything if I would just simply love her in return. And I, you know, and I had to tell her, hey, look, no, I'm not into that. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to disrespect you. I'm not going to disrespect God. And more importantly, I'm not going to disrespect myself. By being in this relationship with you when I know it's not going to work out, I'm sorry. I would rather hurt you a little bit now than hurt you a lot later on. So I tell every woman who writes me looking for a romantic relationship with me, I'm sorry, but it's not going to happen. When I give my time back, whenever that happens to be, when I go home, then and only then will I be open to a romantic relationship simply because I'm not going to use anyone i'm not going to play no one the only thing i'll ask for is hey if you don't mind could you look up something on the internet for me or hey can you send me a picture of yourself so i can put a face to a name because it makes it makes it easier for me to communicate with the person when i can see what they look like 
I'll ask for simple stuff like that, but I will never, ever ask a person for money. And that's usually how you can tell whether a person is being legitimate with you or not. Do they ask for money? You know, I don't even ask my own family for money. Every now and then I may ask my older brother Linwood for something, and it's maybe once, maybe twice a year. You know, as a matter of fact, I just asked him the other night because they just came out with the holiday package, and it's you can buy up to $75 on a package. And they had some really good stuff on there, some Clover Hill Bear Claw Danishes, and I've talked about them on on a past episode, them things are phenomenally, oh my God, I'd slap my grandma, they're so good. And I love my grandma. You know, and they had some cream cheese on there, you know, some Pop-Tarts and things that you just can't buy here. So I, I talked to my brother and I was like, look, man, dude, if you don't mind, you think you could spare maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks. You maybe help me out, get a little bit. So I went ahead and spent that much because this is, I don't foresee myself, you know, buying another holiday package anytime soon. You have to be careful because, look, man, guys are in prison for a reason. I'm in prison for a reason, people. There's a verse in the Bible. I can't tell you exactly what book, what chapter and verse it is, and I'm paraphrasing. But it goes along. Jesus was telling uh, his disciples, you will know them by their fruit. I'm going to ex you know, translate that into a modern expression. Actions speak louder than words. If a person is constantly asking you for stuff, especially every time they call, and especially when they first start a conversation off, like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. Oh, hey, look, yo, no, I need you to do this for me. Can you, you know, can you send me this money? Or can you do this for me? Or can you, you know what I'm saying? They're using you. That's just the way it is. You have to be very, very careful in dealing with a prisoner because understand, they have nothing but time in here. And I know a lot of guys are, are juggling four, five, six, seven different women. Some of them got up to 15 to 20 women from around the world that they're juggling and they're getting money from every last one of them. They're using every last one of them. And when they go home, they'll completely cut off all contact. You know, and that's just, that's what a lot of guys do. So the odds are against you, Shuri. I'm sorry, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you how it is and hearing how most guys think. Test them. And see what happens, because you're going to find out for sure. That doesn't mean that you don't write inmates, people. I'm not telling you not to reach out to inmates. I'm just telling you to be very, very careful about getting romantically involved with inmates and be very, very careful about sending money to inmates. My policy is this. I don't ask nobody for nothing. If the person feels bad for me or if the person really likes me, if the person wants to help me, whatever reason, and they offer to send me something, my response is this. Look, you don't have to do that. But if it's something you really want to do, then I appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you so much for helping me out. But understand, you don't have to do this. I would rather go without than to have somebody sacrifice on my behalf. When you find guys like that, you know it's legit. But if they're asking you for stuff, it's time to cut the cord and cut your losses. You know, I mean, that's the only thing I can say. You have one minute remaining. And remember, if you were ever in a relationship with anyone, whether it's romantic, whether it's simply just friendship, whether it's family member, whether it's business relationship, whether it's a religious relationship, church, it doesn't matter. If your gut, if your instinct is ever telling you, I don't trust this person, you need to get that person out of your life because there is a reason your body is telling you not to trust them because they're not trustworthy. And if that's the case, it's better off to go ahead and end that relationship now before you get in way too deep because sometimes you can get in way too deep and then it's too late. This has been Red on Your Randy. I hope you enjoy listening to me. Those of you who listen to me on Apple Podcasts, I would appreciate it if you would review me and rate me, preferably five stars, but I'll take whatever you think I'm worth and be damn grateful for it. 
Take care. Stay safe. Thank you for using GTL.